All of us remember where we were that day when we all heard the news. And that includes Channel 3 employees who rushed into work as the tragedy was unfolding. Here are their lasting memories from 20 years ago. It was a beautiful, bright Tuesday morning. Blue skies, perfect temperatures. It was that perfect day. And then a plane hit a building. Morning, Cleveland. It's United 93 with you, 350. Uh, some lights up here at 35. Any ride reports? I was right outside this door um, <laughs> planting shrubs when I looked up and heard this roar up above in the sky. There was a huge jet that I could see in the distance, but it it felt like it was flying way too low. And so I came in the house, turned on the television. What, what we have is something that most Americans thought could never occur. I had the Today Show on in the background, and yes, there was this uh, report of something hit the World Trade Tower. At that moment, something just clicked inside. And I got dressed, went to the station, and it felt like we were there for the next three days. <laughs> This was going on on two levels. You had this massive story unfolding nationally, which had us riveted and unnerved, but in real time, we also had the local implications. It was clear that something had happened over Cleveland in our airspace. It turns out Ramona had actually seen the aircraft. No way to know at the time that's what no, it was. No, no way. When I walked into the building, I remember it was busy, it was all hands on deck. Everybody was down in the newsroom, but it was calm, not chaotic. Right. I'm Tim White. I'm Ramona Robinson. For the next half hour, we will... And I think I grew up on the air that day, but I had to hold in everything I felt. I was fearful. I was angry. I kept mouthing to Tim because our mics were hot and I, we couldn't talk to one another because right. we didn't want viewers to hear what we were saying. And I kept mouthing to him, they attacked us. They attacked us. Because I was, I was literally in shock the whole time and trying to hold back the tears. I got out to go talk to these firefighters and three of them were just standing on the side of the bridge crying. Never seen anything like that before. Didn't know how to respond, but they knew exactly what had happened and they knew who was in that building when that building came down mm. and it impacted them immensely you were angry that day I was, angry. I was terrified i was worried about my mom worried about my family and worried about clevelanders i mean you were understandably you know being in the uh, air force reserves you what were you going through that day uh i realized probably by 10 o'clock that morning that a lot of my brothers and sisters in uniform were going to be engaged in a deadly fight. Didn't know it was going to last as long as it did, but I realized that this was a time when America takes stock of its strengths and takes care of its long-term interests. So I knew that there would be a big military response to this. When it happened, I think it just knocked us all really off our feet. And I'll never forget driving into work and there was one guy on one of the bridges on 90 standing there with an American flag, waving that flag. He was there for hours, day and night, and flags were everywhere. If you went out and you drove around and those firemen and police officers or volunteers would be out at every traffic light. Thank you very much. And they'd have a big boot and they'd take Thank any you. kind of money Thank you. that you would that you would give you could throw a 20 in or one in you know change in and i just thought that that was really cool one of the things that strikes me is that when a great national disaster like 911 strikes this country it is the good people of cities like cleveland who rise up to meet it always always And you can watch more of those special interviews in our special section to mark 20 years since 9-11 on WKYC.com.